In Pokemon, there are 18 main types, each with their own offensive and defensive benefits and downsides. When looking at whether an individual Pokemon will be good in your team, or in general, its typing will be a big factor in that judgment. This means that knowing which types and type combinations are better than others is important, as using a worse typing may lead to a worse team. Obviously, picking Pokemon is more complicated than just picking the type with the best matchups into other types, as type balance is very important. But regardless, knowing which type combinations are the best is helpful in building a team. Today, we are going to find out which is the best type combination. But because this channel is not just about me sharing my opinions, we will be using math to do this. Thanks to user almosthuman1122 in the Discord for inspiring this idea. They wrote some code to find the best single type, and that inspired me to use a different method to find the best type combination. You'll notice that this video is a little bit different from my normal puzzle content. Uh, I'm not quite sure what type of content I will be making in the future, so if you like this video and want more like it, please like and subscribe. If you prefer more puzzles like my previous videos, uh, comment that down below and I'll make sure to be receptive to that feedback. To find the best type, we are going to be using a similar method to how Google figures out what to show you when you search. I'm now going to get into some of the math, so if you're not interested, you can skip to the timestamp on the screen to see the results. You don't need a math background to understand anything that's going on, but if you're not in the mood for this and you just want to see the results, go ahead. First, let's talk about the way Google finds out which websites to show you. Their goal is to show you the websites you would want to see the most. The way they do this is by pretending that you can't search and that you're just on a website and the only way you can go to a different website is by clicking a link. So for example, if I were on a YouTube video, I would only be able to click the other videos uh, that are in the recommended or a link in the description to get away from my current web page. In the example on screen, if I am at website A, I can click a link to get to website B or website C. Assuming that you're equally likely to click any link on screen, they then do some math to find out after many, many links clicked where you are likely to be. But instead of just considering the most likely place, they consider the likelihood that you are at each place and use that as a ranking. The website that you are most likely to be at will be the first ranked website and so on. If you know some math and are curious how this actually works in practice, they represent this graph with an adjacency matrix, add a fudge factor representing alternate methods of getting to the next website, make the matrix row stochastic, and then find in the eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. If you have no idea what that just meant, uh, don't worry about it. It's just uh, the nitty gritty details that don't really matter a lot. If you want to learn more about the math, uh, I have a paper about it linked in the description. This system is better than just counting the number of incoming links a website has, as having a popular website linked to your website counts more than having an unpopular one. So having a link from a popular website like YouTube will increase your ranking more than a forgotten website made by a teenager in 1999. We can adapt this algorithm to work on the Pokemon type chart. If we replace websites with types, and instead of having links as the connectors, we have how much damage our type would do to a different type, we will get a method to find the best type. Before we get into the results, I want to discuss some of the limitations and issues with this method, or at least my specific implementation of it. In the end, I decided to give half a link for a resistance, a full link for neutrality, a double link for a weakness, and no link for an immunity, with a quarter link and a quadruple link for a quad resistance and a quad weakness, respectively. I did this to model how much damage they actually did in the game, but it did create some unintended consequences. This shows in the results, as overall, the rankings favor offensive types, and especially types that have a lot of super effective matchups against other types. If you guys want, in the future, I can make an updated version that tries to make defense more of a factor. Um, as for the results, I won't actually show you all the results, as there are 101 type combinations, but I will sit, hit some of the highlights, and if you guys comment that you want it, I'll publish the data in my Discord, or in a community post, or something like that. With all that being said, let's get into the results. In last place, we have the normal type. This makes sense with what I said before about the model really preferring having super effective hits over not many resistances, because the normal type hits no types for super effective damage. The model also penalizes monotypes as they don't have another stab to use, so it makes sense that the mono normal type is last. In reality, the normal type alone is usually quite bad, but it's definitely not the worst type combination of all. The next couple types are just other monotypes, or the normal type paired with another bad type like Poison or Psychic. The real shockers on our list come at ranked 150 and 146. Remember, this is out of 171. These are the Ghost and Dark type and the Ghost and Normal type. The Ghost Normal type 
is usually ranked as one of the top types in the game due to its three immunities, two resistances, and only one weakness. Additionally, its ghost and normal stab combo hits most Pokemon for neutral damage. However, it can only hit two types for super effective damage, and this model likely underestimates the value of having immunities rather than resistances. This typing is just the perfect storm of traits that love themselves to be undervalued by this model. Getting into the low hundreds, we see a lot of middling types, like Grass Dragon or Poison Flying, along with types that could definitely be a lot higher, like Dragon Steel or Dragon Ghost. This model really seems to hate Dragon and Steel types more than it should, which is kind of strange, but I don't know. In 94th place, we get our highest ranked monotype with the ground type. It barely beats out the fire type in 96th place for the spot. Being super effective against steel, rock, fire, electric, and poison gives it enough good interactions that it makes sense that, that it is this high. In general, monotypes did pretty poorly with ground in 94, fire in 96, rock in, in 131st, and everything at lowest being 144th. In 91st, which is about the middle of the pack, is, in my opinion, the second biggest anomaly in the entire list, after Normal and Ghost being so low. Here we find the Ice Bug type. I will be entirely honest, I have no idea why the type, this typing is this high. Its offenses aren't great, and it's defensively incredibly poor, including quad resistances to fire and rock, two really highly rated types by this model. The only possible reason that it's not near the bottom is that Ice's offensive power uh, saves the type. Moving up to 86th place, we reach our median type. This type is supposed to represent the most average type out there. And what better type to have in this spot than Fairy Steel? I'm being sarcastic, of course. Fairy Steel is often regarded as the single best type in the game for its myriad of resistances and immunities, which amount to 11 in total. I think the model doesn't really respect this type because Fairy and Steel are not powerhouses from a super effective hits perspective, and both types fail to hit fire types for neutral damage. In 50th place, we have the Rock Steel type. This type has some great offensive matchups and is very good defensively against some types, but this and a couple other placements you'll see later is the reason that I think the model does not penalize having quad weaknesses enough. In actual gameplay, they can be quite debilitating where a regular weakness wouldn't be. So if I were fixing the model, this is something I would address. In 18th, we get the Ice Rock type, which is a garbage type, but for some reason, this model loves rock and ice, so it gets this far. Now we are into the top 10. In 10th, we have Ground Fighting. This is certainly one of the best types in the game, uh, having really strong offensive matchups, making it no surprise that the model loves it. In 9th, we have Fire Ice. Another instance of this model overlooking a poor defensive typing for a stab combination that it really loves. In 8th, we have Fighting Rock. Fighting Rock is a fine offensive type, but it's weak to good types like Ground, Water, Fighting, Steel, and Fairy. In 7th, we have a type that confuses me. It's Steel Ground. I always think of this type as a balance between defense and offense, so it's a little strange that this model, which has seemed to love offensive type combinations, uh, picked this type to be so high. In 6th, we have another one of the worst types in Fire Rock. I think the trend we, that we have been seeing is that these types with crippling weaknesses don't get punished nearly enough. A quad weakness to water and ground should be a death sentence, but the model loves the offensive coverage enough to put it this high. In contrast, in 5th, we have a type that very much deserves a spot, Fairy Ground. This is the highest ranked type combination that doesn't exist yet in the actual games, but it is definitely up there for one of the best offensive types in the game. In 4th, we have another type that the model got right. Ground Flying. This is another type that blends offense and defense really well, and really deserves its spot. In third, we go back to the types that don't get penalized enough for having quad weaknesses. Rock Ground. This one is very similar to Fire Rock, so it makes sense that it's ranked similarly. In second is Fire Ground. This is a solid typing that is honestly just a straight upgrade over Fire Rock, so it's really understandable why it would be here with Fire Rock being so high, being uh, ranked 7th. And finally, in first, we have the mathematically proved best type, Ice Ground. Ice Ground is not a gr great defensive type, being hit by water, grass, steel, fighting, and fire super effectively, but it is an absolute unit offensively, hitting 9 types for super effective damage, and being arguably the best offensive type combination in the game. Just before we end, I wanted to point out that for some reason this model absolutely loves ground types. Every ground dual type besides ground normal was ranked 32nd or higher, meaning half of the types ranked 32nd or higher were ground types. Uh, 
Ground dual types also made up seven of the top 10 and all of the top five types. Comment down below if you want me to do this again and try and make the model pick up on defense more. Uh, if you like this type of video, like and subscribe so that I will do more in this style. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.